All right, so in 2020, we saw a lot of laptops to the point where this year, I actually think we saw the most number of laptop choices available ever. Like there's just so many devices that companies were pumping out. And I checked just before this video, I was like, how many devices did I get? I was just curious, 67. I was sent 67 laptops from various companies from 2020 is just crazy. Now, the truth is I didn't review most of them. They, they go back in case you're wondering, but I didn't review most of them for a couple of reasons. Number one time is just, I had less time than normal this year. But the big thing is that I think a lot of companies were just refreshing devices, right? There was like, you know, we we're gonna change it a little bit. Here's the new laptop for 2020. And I was, I didn't wanna review. The truth is I don't wanna waste your time. Like that's the thing that's very precious, right? You guys are watching these videos. I don't want to burn seven minutes of your time, 10 minutes of your time, making another video of something you saw last year with like a new color. That's just not how I roll. So I skipped a big portion of them. However, I wanted to do a video at the end of this year, kind of ranking the devices just for my opinion. What did I think of the devices as a, as an overall product, right? So tier list time. I wanted to do a tier list of these devices, again, from best to worst. And this time's a little bit different. I wanted to do a video just on the devices I was interested in, right? The stuff that I was interested in in terms of like replacing my existing laptop or stuff that I was just drawn to because it was a cool product. Okay, top of the list, Legion 5. So this is from Lenovo. I'm comfortable placing this as an A tier, I think. I may regret this, but I feel like we're opening strong here. Legion 5, AMD-based laptop, really well built for its price point. I felt like this was one of very few devices out there, AMD-based devices out there, that was done properly. So many companies tried to make a Ryzen-based gaming laptop, and so many of them did a really poor job of it. These guys did it well, so it's an A tier for me. Uh, next up, Nitro 5 from Acer. This is... Yeah, I'm gonna place it in B tier. So there's two things that come to mind. Number one, it's a red gaming laptop. It's 2020, that's like a dying fad. They're still doing it. Maybe it's, you know, it's a marketing position, so it's not the best looking device they have there, but it's a red gaming laptop. This was also Ryzen based, pretty well done. I do think that it would be tough for Acer to sell this thing alongside the rest of their devices if they made this device too good looking. Like they gotta make it a little bit ugly so that the other devices they sell look better, uh, but, yeah, it's a, it's a solid B tier for me. So the G5 SC, so this is from Dell. This is another one of the, we had a lot of Ryzen's to start here. This was one of the few that had an AMD graphics card to go alongside and they had this tech that kind of made the GPU and the CPU talk together to give like a little bit of boosted performance. I would place this as, yeah, it's a B tier. Uh, it doesn't do better because I remember this thing running hot. Like it's a Dell device, a lot of them do, but this, I feel like they could have cooled this a little better. Uh, yeah, B tier. Okay, Legion 7i. This is also from Lenovo. This was not as well done as the Legion 5. I'm gonna put this as, yeah. I'm gonna put this as a C tier. So, okay, it's an expensive device, right? These are, these are Intel based. When you see the i, it's an Intel chip. This was also expensive because it's like the more premium version. The seven is higher than the five. And also their pricing, like Lenovo's pricing is all over the place. They have sales some days, they have like, overly inflated prices other days to make their sales look better. It's just a weird pricing thing. Legion 7i, C tier. And I also remember the thermals being kind of iffy on this device. Okay, the RP. So this is the RP15 from Electronics. A whole bunch of other kind of uh, boutique brands sell a similar device. This is a member of the secret laptop club. This was a really good device. Ryzen based and very inexpensive for the kind of hard. I had placed this as an S tier. If my memory serves me correct, I would consider the RP15 to be single-handedly the best value high-performance gaming laptop on the market right now. Like if you're trying to spend the best, like the least amount of money for the highest possible frame rate, this is probably the machine. It's a really good one. Yeah, it's an S tier. I don't love the keyboard, but I can kind of forgive it because the price is well done. Blade 15, this is the laptop that I probably use the most this year. I wouldn't give it an S tier. Uh, Two things come to mind. I feel like Razer could have and should have done more with this year's iteration of it. I think they changed the keyboard, but aside from that, the performance was kind of very similar. Not 
really through fault of their own. Like they, you know, they're working with Intel and Nvidia to kind of depend on them for their performance, but they could have done stuff to make this thing a, a better iteration of a product. Also, they got rid of the mercury white color for like the advanced model, which I personally like. That's why I still use the old one as well. Uh, Max 15. This is another device from Electronics, another, uh, what are they called? Secret laptop club device. This goes in, yeah, it's an A tier for me. Not as good as the RP15 to me. Two things, it, it gets hot to the point where, it, like, it doesn't throttle, it probably should throttle, it gets that hot. Like these run weirdly hot and the fans are crazy loud on these devices because you can configure them so powerfully. Area 51M, oh, okay. It's either a C or a D. I'm gonna place it in C. So if you're unfamiliar with this device, it's that big one, that gigantic one from Alienware, uses two AC adapters. The whole premise of the Area 51M was that you could upgrade it, right? You have this gigantic laptop and you could swap out the parts with new ones. A very rare thing to do with laptops, right? Change the GPU, change the CPU. You couldn't actually do it though. If you had last year's Area 51M and you wanted to swap out the CPU and or GPU to this year's model, they didn't work. And it was just so disappointing. So many customers bought that first generation one with the kind of hopes or intent of upgrading it and then they didn't allow it. Now, I don't know how much of that was Alienware's fault. It could have been Intel, it could have been Nvidia, but for whatever reason, this was one of the big kind of components, big characteristics of this device and it just, it didn't work out. You could only upgrade it within the generation itself, which was really weird. But I respect what they were trying to do with the super powerful system. So it's not a D tier, it's a, it's a C tier for me. Triton 500. This, I'd say it's a C tier. So this was one of those devices that was really lightly refreshed. I loved last year's model. It was like this blue color that looked really cool. And I don't know, they just tweaked it in this really unimpressive manner. It was really good last year. I would have given it like a B, maybe even A tier last year, but C tier this year. The GE66, so this is from MSI. This I would place, yeah, it's an A tier. This was one of the devices, few devices that was heavily tweaked for this year, like full blown RGB system if you're into that, but they just made a much better, thinner, lighter product than they had in the past. So that's a really, that's a good one. XPS 17, this was really cool. S or A? S, yeah, let's give it an S tier. Well, okay, so yeah, A tier, I take that back. So here's the thing, XPS 17, new design one of the best looking devices in the world right now, right? Super big screen on a relatively small footprint, like really thin bezels. The thermal performance should be better. Now I know if people that watch our channel, oh, you're always about the thermals. Listen, when you buy this kind of device, when you spend this kind of money, you want it to be awesome, like super awesome. It's expensive, but it just, it just wasn't quite there to be an S tier for me. But overall, really good device. The Book 13, so this is from Razer. This is their new device, C tier for me. Uh, it just boils down to price. This is way, way too expensive for it to be any higher. Like I know Razer devices are usually expensive and they have a very unique look. It's a really well-made device, but this is like, you gotta compete with so many devices when you're in like the $1,500, $1,600 point. And for the performance you're getting on this thing, you're paying for a very unique looking device. And at this kind of money, yeah, C tier for me. The Omen, okay, S tier. This was a huge surprise for me. So Omens in the past, ever since I started this YouTube channel, I think in 2015, I tried my first HP Omen. It was hot, it was like overheat central. Uh, and every year it's just like, oh, here's a new Omen. Surprise, it throttles hard. This year it didn't, like at all. Big improvements, I think they finally realized that people care about thermal performance on devices. Uh, and it's just like a really well-made device, I liked it. Bit of a screen gap, I remember. This was like, uh, it was a bit of an issue for some people, but yeah, it's a good one. M17. This is a B tier. So this is the big Alienware 
M device, like the kind of regular laptops, but like the 17 inch one, this should have better thermal performance than it does. Back to thermals, it seems. Um, okay, so 17 inch device, right? Big device, you got a lot of room in there to do some crazy cool stuff to blow the heat off of it, but they didn't really tweak the thermal stuff. And Alienware software sucks. Alienware, if you watch this video, you need to just completely revamp your software. It's clunky, it's buggy. You guys need to fix that. And you can, I know you can. Okay, Blade Pro. This clean software, relatively clean software. So this I'd place as, yeah, I put it as an A tier. Nah, yeah, let's give it an A tier. So this is a really niche device. It's big, it's powerful. But the one thing I think that they do really well is that they make a device that takes acoustics into account. And what I mean by that is that even though it's a big and powerful system, when it's idling or even when you're doing light tasks, the fans are super quiet, which is like, no one's doing that. You know what though? This is so expensive. If I'm not mistaken, this is like three, four thousand dollars. I'm gonna put it as a B tier because it doesn't quite jive in the A tier, to be honest. Yeah, it's a B tier, but if like, this is something that so few companies do, right? Like, let's say you have, like right now, I'm recording this video while running a laptop that's screen recording. If this was a Windows gaming laptop, you'd hear the fan. I'm using a MacBook because they, they know. Some people care about fan noise. I'm screen recording, you can't hear the system fan. That's why I'm using a MacBook. But a lot of companies just, they do that wrong. And these guys do it right for a big, powerful device. Okay, the Mech 15, also from Electronics. This is, uh, this is a B tier for me. So this is also a member of the Secret Laptop Club and it's a good performer, but I really don't like the keyboard. And it's like a mechanical one. And I feel like they did it for like marketing things. Like, oh, we have a mechanical keyboard, but it's just a really bad keyboard. But again, personal opinion, this whole thing is opinion based. So it's a B tier for me. Stealth 13. It's a B. This is again, really expensive, but you know, I, I feel like the value is a little bit better on the Stealth than the book, uh, but it's a kind of mediocre device in terms of dollar to performance ratio, but it's super unique. If you want like a really small, uh, high performance, well, moderately high performance gaming laptop, that's a 13 inch screen with high refresh screen, that's it for you, but you gotta pay up. Ooh, Asus Tough 15. D tier. This was a Ryzen device, had high hopes for it. This was like a really inexpensive AMD gaming laptop. I was like, oh, this is gonna sell really well. And it just had thermal issues up the butt. It was a really poor performing. I don't know if I did a review on this thing. I actually don't think I did, but it was just weirdly hot considering how much space this thing had to cool it off properly. Yeah, D tier for me. And I don't think they fixed it. I revisited it like, several months after I got my initial review unit, but yeah, it was a, it should have been better. Could have been better. Okay, Helios 300, A tier. This last year was an S tier, like S tier. It was an S tier and it was, I mean, it was so good last year. It was again, a device that they just tweaked so lightly. They added some RGBs, that's it, right? I feel like this should have been better. Uh, and the, I think my biggest issue with the Helios 300 is that they didn't drop the price as often as they did last year. So they had sales in 2019, like Black Friday sales, like sales. When it was sale time, Helios 300 was consistently one of the best things you could buy. This year, they didn't do it. They was just like, eh, we'll jack up the price and we'll keep it there. So really good device, just could have and should have been better. Zephyrus M, this is, a, this is a B tier for me. This was a really cool color. Again, I don't know if I made a video on it, but it was one of the nicest looking devices, really clean, really minimal look. Uh, but performance was kind of middle of the road. It was more, it's mostly pricing. That's what I was concerned about. It should have been a cheaper device, but yeah, it was expensive. Creator 17, this is the one with the mini LED uh, display. It was really nice looking display. I put it as an A tier. I really wish that it was Again, a device that considered acoustics. Like I remember the fan at idle was like, it would hum. If you're buying something like this, spending this kind of money, and you're probably using it in a professional environment because you, you know, you're, you're dealing with really good image quality and stuff, it should have just been, should have been a better 
acoustically designed device. We got the Legion 5i, so just like the Legion 5, but with an Intel chip. This is not an A tier. This is a B tier because, well, it's Intel's chip. They run hotter, they're more expensive. Everything bad. Well, not bad. Everything worse than Ryzen, especially right now. And that's the thing, next year. Next year, I think we're gonna see a ton of really good high-end Ryzen devices. It's gonna be the year of AMD laptops. Prestige 14. Hmm. This was reviewed earlier on in the year. I don't remember that review all that well, but I don't use it. And if I and say, I remember wanting to use this device as my personal device, right? Cause it's like a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner than your average laptop, 14 inch screen. I remember it had a single fan. It was like this device that had so much promise, good GPU, good CPU, but because of the single fan, it just choked a little bit. Yeah, maybe a B, but I would say C because they, I know they could have put a double fan in there. I remember, yeah. It's all coming back. They could have, they had the space, they just didn't for whatever reason. Aero 15, this was a good device. It's kind of showing its age though. Like in terms of the design, it's a B tier for me. Am I gonna run a room? Like what happens when I, Aero, okay, uh, let's try this. This would be another B tier to be completely honest. This had a mechanical keyboard. Oh, so it stacks, okay. Uh, this was had a mechanical keyboard, really good mechanical keyboard. Everybody who tries a mechanical keyboard fails in terms of uh, gaming laptops. They all think, hey, we got a mechanical keyboard, go buy it, it's awesome. No one does it right. These guys are closest. I wouldn't say it's a perfect mechanical gaming keyboard, but it feels distinctly mechanical and it's a, it's a nice keyboard. So it's a B tier. Good thermal performance too, I remember. The M15R3, this, this was improved this year. Improved enough though to be an A tier? Definitely not an S tier. I put it as a B tier. Only because I know Dell can do better. I know they can do better. Plus their janky software. Yeah, solid B. They can do better. Next year, I just can't. You know what would win? Straight up, an M15 with an AMD chip in it. That would crush. That would just absolutely crush. Better thermals, lower price, everybody wins except maybe Intel, <laughs> they don't win. G14, this is an S tier, 100%. This single-handedly best laptop this year. This was, you know, if I had awards, this would win it, best laptop of the year. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with the G14, it's a gaming laptop, had a Ryzen chip in it, great performance, and it was small, and it was just awesome. And it had that like cool micro LED, or not micro LED, these little LEDs on the back, of the display panel so you could like light them up and do cool things and show memes is the best okay 13 inch macbook pro um this has i'm assuming this yeah this is gonna be the m1 equipped ones yeah it's an a tier and i would consider using this thing like if it had more storage and if it was i guess a little bit better for for what i do i would use it it's really good and it's like M1, they're like the Apple's chips are just, they're on another level right now. They're gonna fire up real soon. The GS66, so this is from MSI. This would be a A tier or B tier. I really like this device. I played a lot of Apex on this machine because it had the 300 Hertz display panel. This is really good. Uh, I'd give it an A tier. I was trying to think, is there anything I disliked about it? You guys are gonna go back to my review and call me out on something, but I'm gonna place it as an A tier because my memory doesn't pop up any red flags when I look at this device. It was a nice looking device and they tweaked it enough that I would consider it like a proper refresh. So it's an A tier. The 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, B tier. So they fixed a whole bunch of stuff this year. They got rid of the butterfly keyboards. They got a nice screen. Uh, decent thermals, considering how thin that thing is. They're just so freaking expensive. And, and we're all waiting on M1. We want some kind of Apple Silicon based 16 inch MacBook Pro, cause that's gonna be on another level. The Zephyrus S, I'm not even sure if that's a Zephyrus S in the picture, but uh, this is a B tier for me. This is a very expensive machine. So Asus, 
they have the Zephyrus as like their premium Zephyrus and it opens up in the back to vent out the air and it actually works. It's actually really cool, but it's got this weirdly expensive price tag that's associated with this product every year. And in the beginning, when they first came out with it, like the very first Zephyrus S was like the thinnest gaming laptop ever. No one else did anything like it. But at this point in 2020, a lot of companies are making thin, powerful gaming laptops and this just doesn't stick out as much as it used to, but the price tag is still nasty high. So it's a B tier for me. XPS 15, I put it as a B tier. It could be an A tier if the thermals on this thing were better. So this one does not have a vapor chamber. The XPS 17 does. Thank God I ranked it a little bit higher. Uh, but yeah, it is. It, it just performs a little bit worse in thermals. And look at that spread, man. It's like a three S tiers, one D. I'm just gonna go through this real quick just to make sure I didn't screw something up. I think these are all right though. Yeah, I'm just looking at like the A's and C, like, yeah, this looks good. I'm satisfied with this list. The S tiers, RP15, definitely. Like just best value for your money for a gaming laptop right now. If you want something really high end, if you want like the bleeding edge performance for games, RP15 delivers it at a very reasonable price. Omen 15, much improved, just it, it's an S tier for me. And of course, G14. So that's my list. Now I know this is gonna differ vastly from what you guys would do, right? I feel like everyone's got a very different opinion on how this stuff plays out. But yeah, this is mine. I'm curious, what are your S tier laptops? I'm actually gonna check out the comments pretty heavily this video. I just wanna see what would you guys consider an S tier laptop. Doesn't have to be a gaming laptop, just stuff that you would wanna use. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.